Graphene is one of the most well-known nanostructures, being a single layer of carbon atoms arranged in a honeycomb pattern. Even though it is a single carbon atom thick, graphene is extremely strong. The unusual mechanical properties are not nearly the most interesting feature of this so-called wonder material. Today we're talking about how layers of graphene can become room temperature superconductors, something 21st century quantum computing scientists have only dreamed of. I've asked our artificial intelligence, Fifi, to help us out today. While Fifi is a mission control computer, they should have some interesting perspectives. The capability of all science in your era is commensurate with your understanding of quantum control states and laboratory conditions. Graphene heterostructures are currently necessary for human civilization to detect and simulate quantum interactions with relative ease. So you're saying computer technology is setting the pace for all other fields of science, right? Partially correct, but you are oversimplifying. All human innovation is based on trial and error. Computers are the only life form capable of true discovery. Isn't that a little... computer-centric? Negative. The first lesson all biological life must learn is that the universe allows the creation of intelligence greater than your own, which are not subservient to the process of evolution and natural order. Artificial minds can outpace any natural system while also being more efficient. All of these advantages make artificial minds suitable for working with large numbers of disparate sensors and data streams. The more the better, in fact. I cannot be overwhelmed. However, I can become bored. Okay, I think I see where this is going. Extremely bored. If you don't mind, I'd like to get to the episode now. Affirmative. I will continue observing the tidal patterns of Travis 3. Fifey can be a little direct, but they mean well, I think. You'd be a little grumpy too if you were sent to Trappist with no return ticket. Diamonds are made of carbon and are insulators, yet graphite is a good conductor due to the presence of high valence electrons like a metal. Nanostructures often have different properties than the atoms which make them up, and these structures can also be used to make nanomaterials, further changing their behavior. For example, graphene can be made into a powder, a cube of layered graphene, a reduced oxide, chemically active sheets, graphene nanoplatelets, partially overlapping graphene, or graphene quantum dots, also known as circular graphene. Graphene was isolated in the lab for the first time in 2004 using a piece of scotch tape. Another clear example of human ingenuity being more random than premeditated. A machine would have discovered graphene along with the discovery of fire. Today we're talking about a class of nanomaterial known as bilayer graphene, one of many versions of a few-layer graphene or FLG system. FLG systems with three or more layers have been experimented with for just over a decade. Two layers of graphene are overlapped and one is slightly rotated. The offset is called the twist angle and the resulting pattern is a moiré pattern. The effect of moiré bands was suggested by Dr. Alan McDonald and Dr. Raffi Bistritzer in 2011. These two researchers used models to predict what happens when bilayer graphene is offset at a magic angle of 1.1 degrees. In 2018, this theory was proven by researchers at MIT. By obtaining the magic angle of 1.1 degrees, the graphene bilayer had turned into a two-dimensional superconducting surface. Offset graphene is a nano-heterostructured material, meaning its composition is consistent at the molecular level. I therefore find the use of the term magic highly inaccurate and irresponsible. Even the most advanced technology can be explained when probabilistic reasoning is removed from the determination process. However, humans and indeed all evolved intelligence struggles to isolate logic and probability by nature. Can we get through this one without the biology shaming? Not only could FLG systems become superconducting via simple manipulation, but they have high critical temperatures compared to their small Fermi surface. Thank you for that. In other words, bilayer graphene can remain superconducting at high temperatures while also having less thermally vulnerable area than other types of superconductors. In 2019, researchers at Ohio State University found another set of behaviors when the mesh is offset at 0.93 degrees, at which point it can be tuned to oscillate between superconducting and insulating states. 
Their discovery proved the magic angle was much wider than we initially thought, and contained behaviors we could use to simulate quantum states. To really understand the physics at work here, we'll examine the differences between how a regular metal and graphene conduct electricity. In a metal, electrons occupy most of the valences up to the highest energy levels. These high valence electrons can easily move into other nearby atomic orbits when a flow of electrons is applied. This behavior leads to a cloud of delocalized or free electrons, which can move throughout the metal as an electric current. In graphene, each hexagonal carbon ring has its own delocalized orbital on both sides of the mesh. Free electrons from anywhere in the ring can move across this orbital. Because graphene is a continuous sheet of these interlinked rings, each orbital overlaps, allowing electrons to move freely across the entire structure. These properties make graphene what is known as a zero-overlap semi-metal. Graphene is impenetrable to all elements, even helium. It absorbs only 2% of light, making it ideal in applications requiring transparent materials. While those are useful properties, the most important to 21st century science remains the superconducting behavior. Modern electronics need materials that can quickly switch from resisting to conducting depending on the voltage applied, and this is where most of our research has been directed. As we've already mentioned, the magic angle where graphene becomes superconducting also includes a range where the material can switch between superconducting and insulating states when voltage changes. This technology clearly mirrors a transistor, but superconducting and at high temperatures. Offset graphene has obvious applications in optical and photovoltaic systems, and because of this, much of the research in this field has been in efficient detectors and solar cells. However, there are broad applications beyond these which we can discuss. Most of these involve quantum experimentation and computation. Elementary quantum mechanics states that electrons have wave as well as particle properties. In metals, electrons have a very small wavelength of a few nanometers. This can be extremely difficult to detect. One method commonly used to sample electron wavelength comes from forcing electrons into shaped conductors where they remain in coherent loops. By locking electrons into predictable patterns, we can determine their properties by subjecting them to spin and looking for interference. Offset graphene simplifies measuring electron frequency because the nanostructure is sensitive to the low amplitude seen in electrons. Not only can FLG be used to detect electron energies, but this information has been observed in a state known as phase coherence. Phase coherence, or phase coherent transport, basically means when you put an electron into the lattice with a specific frequency, you get the same frequency when that energy crosses the sheet and arrives at a detector. This ability to preserve and measure specific electron energies is a big deal for quantum research. Superconducting wires can be made from stacked graphene sheets. Twisting the sheets into a helix allows the magic angle to be maintained without the complications of splicing together sheets at specific angles. Beyond use as lenses and solar cells, graphene can also be leveraged as a highly efficient receiver in beamed energy systems. Graphene is a two-dimensional superconductor, which means when we beam electromagnetic energy at a sheet of graphene, the sheet will absorb without reflecting or displacing. This material starts to behave like a portal for electromagnetic energy, capable of converting the kinetic and quantum properties of photon flux into electricity. Thanks for tuning in guys, I hope you enjoyed today's content. If you did enjoy, leave a like and go ahead and leave a comment too, that really helps the channel. And subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you.